The basic unit of analysis, I think, in psychology is the individual. Um, so whether you're studying um, the neural changes that um, a company making a decision, um, you're, you're collecting those data from an individual. And, or if you're looking at how culture influences somebody's emotions, you might be sampling people from different cultures, but you're really using the individual's responses um, as a reflection of how their culture might be impacting their responses. So that's, I think, what's unifying about psychology, that the unit of analysis is the individual. And it's also, in our department, and in many departments, the scientific method. You know, we have hypotheses, and we try to test those hypotheses um, by collecting data on individuals. And so that's one thing I think that is um, really important to psychology that you can empirically test a lot of the hypotheses that you have about human behavior. It's not enough to just have a theory about why people do the things they do, but we collect data to see whether those theories are right or are wrong. Um, but that's not to say we don't make lots of connections with other fields. We do. I mean, everybody in the department identifies as a psychologist, but they have lots of collaborations with people in other fields, whether it's in economics or in sociology or in anthropology or in neurology and psychiatry. And that's because a lot of the questions that we're asking are questions, as I've said earlier, that are broadly applicable. And so, uh, so, so it's not uncommon for psychologists to be uh, collaborating and working with people in different fields, but what they really bring, I think, to the collaboration is more this focus on the individual and the scientific method. I think it's not atypical for a student to be thinking about different majors and um, to come to psychology with some interests and to talk to a faculty member about those interests. And together, they sometimes come up with a research project that then just sort of defines the student's experience um, in the department and then as an undergraduate at Stanford. So one student I'm thinking of was a student I had a few years ago. She was really interested in children. Uh, and um, studying something with children. She had done uh, a practicum at the Bing Nursery School, which is associated with the psychology department, and so she was observing lots of kids, and she's just always loved working with kids. But she didn't quite know what to do with that passion for children. And so she um, came to my office, and she was saying that she wanted to do something with kids, and we were doing the work that we're doing now, looking at how culture influences how we feel. But we had never done any work on kids before, and so there was a really nice synergy of, of her interests and my interests. And so she started doing some research at Bing Nursery School, comparing kids who are of European American backgrounds and those who are Asian American backgrounds. And then another undergraduate came on and she collected data in Taiwan. And together, we did a series of studies together that ended up being published, and it's actually one of the articles that's the most highly cited um, from our lab. And so that's both students now are in graduate school. Um, one is at a very competitive clinical program, and uh, she's designing her own studies on kids and looking now at um, how culture and emotion play themselves out in um, stress, anxiety, and other kinds of disorders. Um, the other one is started out in education, is now in social psychology, and she's um, doing kind of similar work, but, but really looking at kids in more educational settings. So I think those are two examples of, of students who had some sort of interest in something and didn't quite know what they wanted to do with it, and then they were just captivated by the research process and then did a series of studies. They were great members of my lab, and now they're, they're on their, you know, doing their own things um, in other institutions, and I have every expectation that they're going to be real contributors to the field of psychology. When I was an undergrad, I was Psycho I came to psychology in my sophomore year, and it was after I had tried a number of different majors. And the thing that struck me was that psychology was supposed to be the study of human behavior, but most of the work and most of the theories were really based on members of Western cultures. And that was more than 20 years ago, and it's still kind of true now, even though in the last few decades, um, there has been a resurgence of interest in understanding how our cultural ideas and practices shape basic psychological processes. And in part, that's because of 
um, a, a seminal paper that was written by Hazel Marcus, who's a faculty member in our department and viewed as the mother of cultural psychology. She really brought to the mainstream this idea that a lot of what we understand about human behavior might be just particular to a Western European American context. And so in this case, I, I was so fascinated by people and I wanted, coming from a family of scientists, but they're more engineers and chemists, I was really interested in applying that method to understand human behavior. And that's what really captivated me about psychology. I, up until that point, I hadn't understood that psychology was a science. I'd really thought that of psychology as being therapy, you know, and that's, that is an important part of psychology and an, ex an extremely important part of psychology, therapy and counseling and clinical psychology, but uh, there's a whole other part of psychology that's about understanding behavior using the scientific method. And so I was interested in doing that, but also then considering how different cultural ideas and practices and beliefs might shape human behavior. And so an example of it is that, you know, I remember in my developmental psychology class really learning a lot about individuation, you know, at a certain a stage of normal human development is when you become an individual and you leave your parents and, you know, you become your own sort of independent adult. But in many East Asian contexts, you never stop being a child. I mean, it doesn't matter what age you are, you are very, very closely connected to your family and very, um, and rely on each other. And that was the first example for me where I thought, wow, these theories that I'm learning in psychology might not be universal. I mean, there might be universal elements to it, um, but there might be many ways in which some of these theories are, vary across cultures. And if so, then um, we need to collect data to really see, you know, whether these theories really hold across cultures.